Earlier today, the Yankees swung a trade with the Miami Marlins for John Birdie to try and supplement an infield that's lost DJ LeMahieu in the last week. While the veteran infielder isn't expected to miss a significant portion of the season, he is still undergoing an MRI this week and the testing results haven't returned yet, so his actual timeline for a return has yet to be disclosed and the Yankees are going to operate on the side of not knowing when he's going to come back for now. And John Birdie should give them some semblance of a solution at a position shrouded in mystery. While he isn't a star, he provides an interesting profile while also having made some adjustments that can make him a nice contributor for this team in 2024. John Birdie is one of the fastest players in the league, sitting in the 95th percentile in sprint speed, which is exactly what the Yankees need. The Yankees had the worst sprint speed in baseball as a team last year, a sign of their lack of athleticism or mobility on the base paths, at least compared to other teams. It reflected their overall base running value as well, as at negative 9 runner runs, they were the second worst base running team in baseball ahead of the Colorado Rockies according to Baseball Savant, and that created some truly awful baseball moments. Sometimes it looked as if the Yankees didn't know how to run the bases at a major league caliber level and John Birdie should help the team have a more dynamic outlook. His versatility with the glove is extremely valuable as well and with 5 outs above average on the season last year while playing 2nd, 3rd, shortstop and some outfield as well, the Yankees can expect above average defensive value from him at a variety of positions and that's extremely valuable especially when someone goes down. Knowing that you have a major league caliber starter at any position in a situation in which someone is hurt, whether that's a late game scratch or a long term injury, can help stabilize your lineup and prevent situations in which you're running quadruple A players who can't handle a certain position on a consistent nightly basis like the Yankees did last year. The Yankees also have bats in their lineup this time around that can do damage, with Aaron Judge and Juan Soto anchoring a batting order that has veterans that can be primed for bounce back seasons like Giancarlo Stanton and Anthony Rizzo, with young guys like Austin Wells and Anthony Volpe who could take steps forward. I also love the fact that they have guys like Alex Verdugo and Gleyber Torres who can give them a more well-rounded approach with some contact and power, and in the case of Alex Verdugo, I think he could have a step forward year, and while it's not going to be an all-star or MVP caliber campaign, it's certainly going to be an upgrade over what we've gotten in left field over recent years. As it pertains to Glaber Torres, we all know that Glaber is one of the more well-rounded hitters in baseball and that he could really have a monster year, especially considering that he's going to be a free agent at the end of the season. Getting back to John Birdie though, what he could provide is a solid 9 hitter who can give the Yankees contact and speed as he has a low chase rate that sat below 26% and that's with an in-zone swing rate over 67% and he also improved his quality of contact throughout the season and the bat is something that could be a lot of interest to the Yankees as his approach fits the Bronx pretty well. Baseball Savant actually believes that John Birdie would have hit four more home runs over the last two years at Yankee Stadium. And while it doesn't seem like a lot, add that to a profile for someone who doesn't already hit a lot of home runs. And it creates a type of profile that does benefit from Yankee Stadium. The kind of profile that isn't going to work in a bigger ballpark like Dome Depot Park, but a guy who doesn't already have a bunch of raw power and can get it out anywhere. Yankee Stadium is a weird ballpark to project offense at because on one hand, it is more pitcher friendly than people think, but on another, there are certain kinds of hitters who can take advantage, and I think Birdie might be one of them. A department where he could be hurt is in terms of his triples or doubles because there just isn't that much room to operate in the outfield in comparison to Miami. With that being said though, Birdie did hit significantly better away from Lone Depot Park last season, and while that's a departure from his career numbers, there are some changes he's made during the course of the 2023 season that would suggest that he's a different hitter than the one we've seen from 2021 or 2022. I find it interesting that he changed his hand placement. If you look at what he did for the first two months of the season, he kept his hands close to his body and lower, and over those two months, he really struggled. He posted an 80 WRC+, plus, and it looked like in his age 33 season, he'd be on the road to a potential early retirement, but then he would change the placement of his hands to be a little higher up and a little further away from his body, resulting in a change that would save his season and also help the Miami Marlins get to the postseason. 
After changing his hand positioning, he posted a 350 weighted on base average with a 119 WRC+, plus, cutting down his strikeout rate to 16.5%, while also increasing the quality of contact from a below average 344x Woba climb in the first two months to an above average 387 mark from June onward. We also saw that as a whole on the season, he cut down his whiff rate, he cut down the strikeout rate, and he increased the quality of contact to at least the league average x Woba con, which is just expected weighted on base average on contact, which is a very fancy way of saying how much damage are you supposed to do when you make contact and he does make enough that it's at least playable and given the great contact skills and given the excellent speed and the defensive versatility we just talked about it makes for a hitter who profiles very well for a bottom of the order type of situation especially when we're looking at a yankee lineup that has a lot of power upside what the yankees could be getting here is a well-rounded hitter who provides the team with a lot of balls in play and some speed with his patient approach and solid consistency making him a hitter that can give the yankees a spark at the bottom of the lineup and make some things happen something i could see the yankees doing with birdie is shuffling him around the infield instead of keeping him at one set position Sure, the Yankees could just keep him at third base, but I believe that they're better suited with him rovering around the diamond if everyone is healthy and performing to expectations. That's not me saying that DJ LeMayu is considerably better than John Birdie, but more so to say that in an ideal world, the Yankees have all of their starters clicking, and John Birdie is seen more as an additional piece instead of somebody they heavily have to rely upon. But I do foresee a world in which John Purdy plays himself into a full-time role, and if you were to outplay LeMahieu, you would just swap their roles. LeMahieu would become the rover guy, and while he can't play shortstop in the corner outfield the same way Birdie can, as well though Cabrera certainly can, and they have Trent Grisham as their fourth outfielder, and he's one of the best defensive outfielders in the league. The nice thing about having John Birdie is that it gives the Yankees options. Something that became way too common last season was seeing non-major league players taking major league at-bats. I mean, we saw Isaiah kiner falafa hitting fifth. Anthony Volpe had to lead off in multiple stretches of the season. Franchi Cordero was hitting in the top five of the order. Jake Bowers was leading off games. It's not that these players do not deserve to get the chances they did with that specific roster because that roster simply wasn't good, but when you're trying to win a World Series, those kinds of players can't constantly be getting at-bats on your team because you need to have better options in front of them. Having John Birdie gives them better options in front of their quad A guys, and given some of the younger guys on their roster and some of the injuries they've had, it makes sense to have a veteran presence who can cover you in left, right, third, short, and second in the case of injury. We all knew LeMahieu was going to have some sort of injury issues throughout the season because he is 35 years old, he's going to turn 36 in July, and we understand that he's dealt with injuries throughout his entire career, at least over the latter stages with the Yankees. LeMahieu should come back at some point during the year, but if they aren't able to get him back at 100%, John Birdie gives them an excellent insurance option, and while I am sad to see John Cruz go because I think he's a pretty talented prospect, the Yankees have a pretty strong track record of identifying which guys to trade and which guys not to trade. Could this trade come back to bite them in the butt? We'll wait and see, but for now, the Yankees traded someone that wasn't going to factor into their major league equation for the next three or four years, and plays the outfield, a place where the Yankees have a ton of talent, and they're able to convert him for a third baseman, and somebody that could really help them, especially after the injury to DJ LeMahieu. With that being said though, let us know what you guys think in the comment section below about this trade. We'd love to get your thoughts and perspectives in the comment section below. Like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell if you love today's video, and you guys can check out Fireside Yankees on various social media platforms whether that's Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, or of course this YouTube page. All of our links are in the description, and you can also check out EmpireSportsMedia.com for written coverage on your favorite New York sports teams. With that being said, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm Ryan from Fireside Yankees. You can follow me at Ryan Garcia ESM, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Ryan out.